It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. After the death of George Floyd, there has been a series of anti-racist books that were really popular that made it to the bestseller list for the New York Times. And one of the books include How to Be an Anti-Racist that was written down by a person named Ibram X. Kendi. More recently, Ibram X. Kendi decided to do the whole entire speech in regards to one of his books. And so without further hesitation, let's see one of the speech and react to what he had to say. What we sort of show in in how to be a young anti-racist is, is that we should be identifying a policy not based on its racial language, not based on even in the intent of the policymaker, but on the outcome. And, and that's why there's racist and anti-racist policies. There, there, there are policies that are leading to and maintaining inequity and injustice that are racist, and then there are policies that are leading to equity and justice. And, and I think if we took that position, we could analyze policies and see which ones are good and which one are bad and who's gaslighting us about the policies that they're making. When I watched the video for the first time, I noticed like a lot of different logical fallacies that he made when it came down to his argumentation. The first one is the black and white fallacy in which a person presented two alternate states or as the only possibility, when in reality, there's more than one possibility. And for this case, it seems as though that Embram X. Kendi is saying you either must have anti-racist policy or you must have racist policies. In the video clip, he argues that there are policies that are maintaining the idea of equity now, it's very important to also define what exactly is equity. That way, everybody is on the same page when we hear that word. Now, the Cambridge Dictionary defines equity as anonymous to fairness, which is a situation in which everybody is treated fairly according to the needs and no group of people is given special treatment. In other words, what Kendi is trying to say right here is that there are certain fragments of society in which minorities are not represented. And because they're not represented, it must be a racist policy. And because it's a racist policy, it must have some sort of equality of outcome to best reflect more minorities within the company. But the thing is though, there's a major flaw in this logic, and I'll try to explain why with a good example of what I mean. Here's some data that comes directly from the NBA. It says right here that in terms of players, about 71.8% of players are black. In terms of head coaches, about 46.7% are black. In terms of assistant coaches, about 42.7% are black. In terms of management, it's about 33.3% that are black. In terms of athletic trainers, about 22.6% are black. In terms of professional staff, about 22% are black. In terms of vice presidents, about 16.3% are black. In terms of management, about 15% are black. In terms of CEOs, about 7%. And about 3.3% uh, for team governors. Now, in terms of the NFL, about 432 people who are players are white and that the head coaches are actually uh, majority white. That's 26 that are actually white. Now let's look at the players for black people or people of color. I really hate that term. Now for black people or people of color, there's over 1,200 and 20 people that are represented for the players. Now for the coaches, it's actually three that are represented as head coaches. Now let's try to apply the logic of Ibram X. Kenny right here. Well you see, there's like an underrepresentation of white players that are part of the NBA and the NFL. 
And because there's like an underrepresentation of white players in the NFL and the NBA, that's actually a racist policy. Therefore, we must have some sort of anti racist policy to make sure that everybody is on the same playing field. Oh, wait a second. You guys are not convinced by the argumentation? Ha, huh, yeah, I thought so. I really, really thought so. This type of argumentation not only come across to me as an argument from ignorance, but also an argument from silence. He's basically saying that he cannot possibly think of any other solutions on why there are like, you know, the portion amount of black people or other people based upon the demographics. He's simply saying, well, because there's a lack of representation, therefore it must be racist. But that's not a good argument. That's not necessarily a good argument. You need to take into consideration like a lot of different factors on why people are not simply interested in a job. Let's just say for the sake of argumentation, that someone who is black wants to live in Miami. Now, according to the data, we do know that the vast majority of the citizens in Miami are Hispanics. And so because they're Hispanics, of course, many businesses are gonna be run largely based upon the demographic that they actually resonate. It's not necessarily systematic racism for a whole entire group of people to be represented if the vast majority of the population are in fact, of course, represented by that group. If you go to a majority black place, the vast majority of businesses are gonna be run by black people. If you go to a majority white place, majority white things are actually gonna be owned by white people. And so a lot of these kind of factors need to be taken into consideration on why some races are represented more in comparison to other races. Not to mention, it comes down to personal interests and ultimately personal decisions. And so if somebody wants to do X, Y, and Z, they have to actually work hard to get X, Y, and Z. And so sometimes races among other people have different interests, which is why they tend to be overrepresented by other areas. In the book, How to Be Anti-Racist, even X Kennedy said that past discrimination justifies future discrimination and that future discrimination justify more discrimination. In the video, he presents to us a false dilemma that there's either racist policies or anti-racist policies. If he wants past discrimination to justify future discrimination, by that very definition, that is a racist policy, don't you think? But anyway, what do you guys think about the video that Ibram X. Kenny did? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's 
everyone's friend, it's Taylor. It's everyone's friend, it's Taylor. It's everyone's friend.